Parallax is near you. He's semi-unconscious, fitful in his own dreaming sleep. There is the sound of waves, the water red from seaweed. It's daylight out, morning. There are thin trees that dot the coast here. And in the distance, structures, though your eyes are blurry as they adjust to the sunlight and to this new reality. Looking across the water, you see a woman. She's walking on the waves directly towards you. Hmm. I'm going to kick Parallax. Hey, wake up. Oh, oh God. Uh, uh, what? One, there's an alternate timeline of you wreaking havoc on everything. Have you seen the gears of this world? It's so messed up. Two, we have company. And I turn my head towards the lady walking on the water. Victoria, would you like to describe your ghostly character at this moment? Sure. So I am a young woman around 19 years old. I am pale, though exceptionally so at the moment, I suppose, uh, and long, dark haired, uh, relatively tall, yet oddly forgettable in appearance at the same time. Uh, she's wearing a tattered, sort of really fancy gown that's all ripped up and dirty and muddy and the bottom's been sort of pulled off. Um, and her hair wasn't a nice updo, but it's kind of all over the place now. And probably most arresting is that she has two things in her arms. One is a large urn and the other is a human skull. Classic carrying a skull around. Like you do. Is that a skull? I think it might be. Metal. It's not not the word I would use. (laughs) I'm going to white walking lean down to said skull. Do we know who that is? (laughs) the ghost around you whispers trust no one you must make your own path be careful that's a no then Byron okay Um, they keep sort of progressing towards the shore the ghost also says I have been long dead I will know few in this world, and the ones that I do know, you must avoid. (sighs) It's not much help right now, Byron, but thank you. Her voice comes to you across the water as an echo, but you don't hear the second voice, almost a whisper. I'm going to sit down next to Parallax. I wonder if it worked. Does, does... Time seem any different now? I mean, it, not to me, but do you know how we ended up here? Mm-hmm. Last thing I remember, I was in a cave. And I, I feel in my breast pocket and I pull out a pocket watch. I'm like, oh, neat. All right, I stuffed that pack in. So what were you saying about me? That alternate me doing what now? Yeah. Parallax. It seems it looks like there's another timeline where you have come into you've encountered some some evil magic and this alternate you is now breaking our timeline it's pushing through and breaking into ours so you oh mean- wait you mean you mean when we were at that ziggurat and stuff oh yeah no I, yeah. I i threw him through like some sort of portal i'm not sure what happened to him um yeah he needs could, to he die. could be dead he could be dead i don't i would i don't know but yeah we're here now that weirdo <laughs> is talking to that skull in her hand <laughs> hey, hey, that. don't focus. Don't try to change the subject. This is you. We're, we're talking about you right now. Yeah, but you're, you're yelling at me about something that other me did. As the ghostly figure reaches the shore, all three of you 
sense something on the edges of your perception. It feels almost like a wave of power. And Victoria, it's as Ermengarde takes her first step onto the rocky shore that you feel this. None of you currently have active mage sights. I turned mine on. (laughs) You can see that the figure is a ghostly version of themselves. It's like they're dead, but there's also heavy death metal uh, magic, heavy death magic all around. And you think that it might be some sort of active spell effect. You also can sense that this area is tied to both life and death. And there's something fateful happening. And that's what you sense with your prime vision. You can examine anything further if you would like. Cool. And other sites will also unveil, unveil different secrets. I'd like to turn on my fate site. Fate site highlights anyone who experiences dramatic failure or success. And it reveals the presence or the use of a destiny, but not the details of that destiny. What you can tell is that all three of you have some sort of joined destiny. You also can tell that Parallax has a looming destiny and you can sense that there's something hanging over him. Is it death? Do you want to examine his pattern more closely? Yes. All right. So it's not a spell effect, which means that you'll be taking a minus three penalty, but you can roll your fate plus your gnosis to examine this. Minus three. Are you using any yantras, any tools or languages as you do this? Yeah, I'm going to whip out my wrench, look through it. Rain at parallax. The wrench is dedicated to tool, fate plus gnosis, minus one. And then can I also speak in Atlantean? You can. It's going to take you a little bit of time to do this because it'll take a second round to apply the second yantra. But this is very visible to you, Armengard. She's just doing it out in the open. She's speaking in words that don't sound like any kind of words that you've heard before. And you kind of recognize this girl. She looks very familiar. You think that you might have seen some YouTube videos that she's posted. Give me a uh, intelligence plus internet occult check. And Charlotte, feel free to roll that spell. And internet is my like specialty in occult. So do I roll an additional dice? Is that how that works? That's exactly right. Anytime you have a specialty, you add plus one to this dice roll. Two successes. Uh, You recognize this as Mona. This is someone who posted an occult blog at one point. They used to be very active. And when you were like 13, you read a lot of her stuff. But now she hasn't posted as much recently. Her material has become less relevant to your life. So you found other sources. It's kind of like seeing a childhood hero. Charlotte, how many successes did you get? Four Four successes. You see the thing hanging over Parallax as a looming dark blade. The blade itself seems to be threatening his very life. You sense that Parallax has something important to do and that fate will involve a sword. Oh, that's the blade hanging over him? You also feel that Parallax's choice will determine what happens with that other timeline. It's connected to him. Mm. Victoria, what does Ermengarde do as she reaches the shore? Anything, just watches? Um, so is going to get up to the shore, momentarily kind of side mouth to Byron, the skull. I think I know her. <laughs> and then like in looking closer, Charlotte, do you have like your big cog halo going and things? Yeah, I have or, my um, my Nimbus, a gear halo slowly revolving around my head. 
Okay, so I'm going to initially do the like pushing my hands really, really hard into my eyes and then mm -hmm. opening them and doing that again. And then sort of shrugging, because I did recently just talk to a giant crow in death. So I mean. <laughs> when you look at them after rubbing your eyes, you can see that they are alive and that they're like, First of all, they're the first living people that you've seen, and you didn't know that living people could glow like this. They both kind of like pulse with an energy. Unlike Byron, who is kind of still, and you can see threads tying Byron to the skull that you're carrying. Okay. The squid mo moan? <laughs> you, you had a flog that I loved? For year, I mean, it's kind of dull now, no offense, but it was real good when I was younger. Is that really you? Do you? Do you, it, the, do you know a large crow? I. You're alive. You're alive. Am I alive? Uh, Mona? Hey, it's great to meet a fan. <laughs> um. You you have a you have a spell on you. That's, can I see that I'm ghosty? Yes, so? you can. You can kind of tell that you are walking on water, kind of floating, in a way. Okay. There's something strange about you, and you sense that if you wanted, you could turn it off by creating another gate here. I like look at my hands and I go did. Did I do this? Byron, did I do this? We did this, he says in his strict formal tone. My apologies. Don't be offended, okay? This is really weird and new and... Of course. That's mean. And I look at her and go, I think I'm gonna try to turn it off. How do I, do I have to roll to do that? Or does it just happen? Can I just yeah. step out of it? Um, why don't you roll for this one? It's going to be death plus gnosis. And you just need a single success. Death. Are you using any tool as you do this? No, not yet. Okay. Well, I got a single success. <laughs> All right. As you cast magic, it seems so strange. You're like become reality and you can feel your mind pushing back against that notion. You just kind of pass into physical reality. It's like there's a wall, you're walking through it. And as you do, you phase becoming material and land on the rocky shore. The shore here is uh, sharp brown rocks. There's no real sand on this beach and there are cliffs that proceed in either direction, both the left and right. The cliffs are fairly steep and look like they would be a difficult climb. The left side has a large stone castle in the distance. And on a peninsula to the right, you see extravagant houses. I suppose to Ermengarde, they're fairly nice houses. They're on the beach, which means that they must be fairly expensive. And in front of you, there is pristine, untouched woods with thin, tall trees. It, that's whatever you did. You look more human, alive. Um, what's your name? Ermengarde Ward. Yourself? Oh. Oh, well, Mona, of course. Yeah, right. and here is Parallax. Hi. He's in the process of destroying the world. And I shoot daggers at you, Parallax. Charm. Um, okay. You're gonna fix that. Weird. Okay. What, you're being weird right now. Um, you're both being weird. I, I saw you speak. Is Ermengarde, was it? Yeah, I saw you talk to that little school of yours earlier. That, that's weird. What? What's up with that? So you're doing it again. <laughs> no, obviously not. Don't reveal anything. Who are these people? What's this Mona that you speak of? Tell me later. <laughs> okay. Um, it, uh, it's not important. 
uh, who are, Perlock is not even a name. Do you, it's an idea. Do you know the wards? Either of you, the ward family. Oh, no. Um, should I roll for it? Um, yeah, do you have dots in politics? Yes, I do, I have one. Yeah, give me a uh, intelligence politics check then. One. You believe that there are some uh, Boston city councilors with that name. There was like two of them. Now you haven't heard about any awakened people named Ward, but you know that mages use secret mage names. You also get the feeling that Ermengarde Ward with your fate side up is this person's true name. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna like, you're gonna see my eyes widen a little. Um, so what, what, I, I saw the face. What are you thinking of right now? Oh, um, it's a girl thing. I'm gonna talk to her alone. And I'm gonna kind of like, be like, come with me. Let's talk a little in private. You didn't answer my question. Do you know the wards? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that over here. You step to the side next to uh, a tree, which has a sign that says, private property, no trespassing. Trespassers will be shot. Okay. Um, are we far enough away from Parallax? In theory. Parallax, you're a space mage. Yeah, I'm totally going to scry their conversation. <laughs> okay. Um, you know that Mona will be able to see you do this because she's got mage sight up right now. Oh, you're right. Uh, mm. Give us privacy, Parallax. <laughs> Is there any way I can make roll to make it more covert so she maybe like right above them so she doesn't look up and see it maybe if she looks at you it will be clear that you are casting a spell but you could try to do it subtly with a roll yeah i'm gonna do it subtly with a roll i'm gonna try doing that wits plus stealth check i actually don't have stealth but i have subterfuge does can i make that work in some way yeah yeah, right. you can. You could tell a lie about what spell you're about to cast. That's a great idea. Yeah, I'm going to be like, I'm going to just cast a spell, and if she calls me on it, I'll say something. Okay. Um, actually, I think I might even have Scry as a rote. As rote. I do. Nice. So that's you'll add a skill to this role. And why don't you two have that conversation, Charlotte, while uh, you're being spied on? <laughs> yeah. I want to know if I notice it first. Okay. So I got uh, two successes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to displace my hearing. I'm not going to open a window. And Charlotte, you want to notice this? Yeah, can, like as we're, we've found a good spot, I want to look back at him and make sure he's not like trying to eavesdrop. Yeah, you're standing in the trees next to that sign. Um, he's back on the rocky beach. And you can see that he is casting some sort of space spell. Um, he's using his rope mandra, so he kind of like makes a small gesture. And you get the sense that he's casting a space spell, but you're not entirely sure without examining him and his pattern. Would you like to do that? Yes. All right. Um, that will take a, um, are you switching site to prime site? Yeah. So why don't you roll prime plus gnosis? Just one. With one success, you can tell that it's a space spell, but you can't tell what he's doing. Can I like, can I see if the magic is coming towards us? You can't. Okay. I'm gonna like yell over at Parallax. Hey! I told you to stay out of it. Hey, who's out there? You hear a voice from the woods. Huh? This beach is private property, you kids. Oh, sorry. Where should we go for a nice, uh, relaxing walk on the beach? You see 
through the trees, maybe 60 feet away from you, that there is a open path. And beyond that, there appear to be green fields in the very distance. A man dressed in a bow tie and working pants. Um, he's got a little cap pulled on. It kind of looks like a uniform. He's um, a little bit pudgy, but he's also muscular. He's holding a pitchfork, which he had been using to move stuff on the ground here. Uh, and he says, this whole place is private co- property. Oh, um, please excuse us, sir. We washed up on the beach. Could you direct us to the exit of this beautiful private property? You washed up. You two are having this conversation through yelling. Are either of the other two of you doing anything during this conversation? Turned immediately away. So, like, oh, this yeah. person not see what my face is, right? Like, um... <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just, yeah. li- I'm eavesdropping in on this conversation. So I'm just like, I'm out of the distance. He doesn't even know I'm there. Yeah, I'm just gonna be like, this is bad timing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's see how Mona handles this. You want to give me a, some sort of social check in this situation, Charlotte? You want to use persuasion? Yes. Okay, so you're going to persuade him that you just need help and that you didn't intend to be here. Of course. Because we didn't. Yeah. <laughs> one success. With one success, it's clear that this guy is distrustful of you. He says, well, the only way is through the main road. You got to come this way. I don't want to go that way. Okay, give us some time to pack up. What are you doing down there? Yeah, so. <clears throat> I told you we washed up. We're all wet. <laughs> He's going to start moving through the forest towards you. Okay. I'm going to put my hands on my guard and like say really, really quickly, listen, I'm so sorry. We have to do it so quickly with not that much explanation, but I think you're a, I believe you're a newly awakened mage. Um, You've just found out magic exists in this world. I will explain everything you want to know. I've never encountered a newly awakened mage before, but I myself went through it so I can help you through this. As long as we keep our cool and like leave through this area and then I can help you. I'm sorry. You know that if she is a newly awakened mage, that it is your responsibility to explain to her how magic works and any crimes that she commits are now on you. Oh, this is fun. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like just just like keep low, don't do any magic unless necessary, and we'll get through this and I can explain more. Don't do magic? Can we can we move away from the groundskeeper, please? Um I think he's coming to us. Um if you want, I can hide your face if that's what you're worried about. Like, let me stand behind you? Okay. This better go well. I haven't cast anything else yet, right? Correct. Okay. Before this man makes it into our view, I'm going to cast Spell of Invisibility on my new uh, friend. You tell me that you're doing that, or are you just going to do it? I'm going to tell you, do I have permission to make you invisible? Are you gonna send me back to death? To the tombs of the crow? Nope, just gonna make you invisible. I mean, I've been that way my whole life. Fine. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so I'm gonna quickly look through my wrench and try to cast the spell. Looking through the wrench, you see the light bouncing off of Ermengarde and you will that light to bend, twisting out of the way so that none hits her. Roll a forces plus gnosis. These dice haven't been really good to me so far. Oh, so good. Okay. One, two, three, four. And I re-roll these three tens. Whoa. Five, six, seven. I rolled three nines. Gone. 
Um, <laughs> are you down any mana or willpower? Yeah, I'm down most of my mana, but none of my willpower. You regain a point of mana as you cast this spell. Yay! And you also gain a arcane condition. Your next spell, your next forces spell that you cast will be empowered, being mm. more powerful as the gears turn favorably upon your casting. Yay. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn to invisible um, er er Ermengarde and say, tread lightly. <laughs> Hey, weren't there two of you? The guy says as he comes towards you. He's pushing away some bushes. Yeah, he's over there. Parallax, down on the shore, what do you do? <laughs> Seeing as I just saw her deceivingly point him in my direction, not too happy about that, by the way. Well, since she's put me in this position, I mean, does it look like there's anywhere for me to get cover? I mean, it is a beach, so I imagine no. Um, oh, you're really right out in the open. Yeah, I am going to cast a ban on this guy. Um, so basically, he's going to be. My plan is to sort of get him into the, or stuck in the forest. So no matter how much he walks, he's basically just going to keep walking in this forest. He's not going to make the beach line. It's an improvised space spell, and it's going to cost you a mana. Yep and you would roll your Gnosis plus space to do it. Also, if this guy's a sleeper and he begins to suspect that something is wrong, it may make your paradox worse. That's fine. <laughs> My guy's narcissist, he doesn't care. Okay. Uh, so yeah, let's roll space and Gnosis to make this happen. Dude. Are you using any tools as you do this? Yeah, especially as you might use my newly found pocket watch. Does yeah. that add plus one? Yeah. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five successes. Wow, uh, you don't spend that mana. Excellent. Check your watch and you imagine that it would take him a lot longer to cross through that forest and it does. He's wading through trees, he's wading through trees, he's wading through trees, but he's not really getting any closer. His brow wrinkles in frustration, but he doesn't seem to notice anything peculiar yet. Excellent. Well, with this newfound time to get the hell out of there, I'm going to start making it. I mean, so I had the castle at one side and then the nice little sort of village-esque place on my other side. Yeah, looking more closely at the buildings to your right, you can see the roof of, it looks like a large apartment complex somewhere through the trees. And then beyond it, there are some very nice mini mansions. They're not quite full mansions, but they're very nice houses. All right, uh, I guess I'm gonna sort of beeline it to the complexes and see if I can't get to a road where I look a little bit less conspicuous in the open. He told us where the road was. He did say, and you overheard him say, you have to come this way to get on the road. To navigate your way to those houses, you'll have to cross some rocky shore, which means that you'll have to make some skill checks to get there in this case. Very well. All right. So you're booking it as fast as you can? Well, I think I feel like I got some time with that spell, so I'm going to move briskly but not like full sprint you know what i mean yeah um let's do like athletics checks to dex yeah. athletics okay so is he um, running in the direction of the road no he's oh him uh parallax yeah he's going to the right towards some buildings over on the right yeah, but the guy pointed to the left where the road was right through the woods he actually indicated that it would be back towards him the direction that he is coming from is the direction that he inferred. The and he was, was from the left, right? He was from directly in front of you in a way. He's okay. in the woods. Okay. The left is a big castle and more cliffs. Okay. Successes on that roll, Parallax? I got three successes. Taking your time, you nimbly hop from rock to rock 
making your way up the shore. You hear the man's voice yell, hey, you can't go that way, way, way. There's an echo as his voice is sucked through that space distortion towards you. Mona, what do you do? Is there a way for me to find the fastest route to that road? That would be a space or fate spell. Uh, a fate spell could take you upon the fastest route if you just- Interconnections? Interconnections will allow you to see the connections between things, but not the nearest road. How about lucky break? A lucky break could have you break away in a direction that gives you a bonus to some sort of roll to evade or to find the road. I'm gonna do it. Okay, yeah, roll that route. Roll your lucky break. And what are you doing with this lucky break? What kind of lucky break are you trying to have? I want to reach that road. Okay. Roll lucky break. Fate plus gnosis plus your rote skill for this skill. One, two, three. Your head starts to hurt as you see all the different paths before you. You can tell that the best way to reach the road is to go diagonally through the woods, not towards the apartment complex where Parallax is going on the shore, but rather straight through the woods, kind of like at a V to this guy. I'm going to go right the quickest way to the street, and hopefully with my lucky break, I won't run into this man. Okay, let's go. Parallax is going in a different direction. Are you trying to bring him with you or are you going to let him split off? Would it cost another spell to just whisper to him, like throw him my words? It would be another spell to do that. Yeah, but, too many. Yeah, it'd be another two dice of Parallax, essentially. No, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go. Okay. Parallax, you see uh, Mona, but not Ermengarde, go through the woods rapidly not towards this guy who pauses for a moment and like looks around and says, wait a minute, minute, minute. <laughs> you think that he's noticing something strange happening. Charlotte, would you roll a Dex Athletics plus one check to make your way quickly through the woods? Three. With three successes, you are booking it through these woods. There's a like a little handmade path here that looks like a few people have walked down and you are running along the edge now of that meadow field that you saw before. In that field, you notice that there are broken columns and strange statues. One of them looks like the head of a snake erupting from the ground and with your peripheral mage sight, you can tell that it is magic. There is magic on that statue. In fact, this whole area seems to be thrumming slightly with some sort of hidden magic. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, do you want to pause and look at that statue? For like half a second. You stop and you look at the statue, roll prime plus gnosis. And while you do it, Parallax, what are you doing? Uh, so I'm on top of this bridge flying behind the rocks, right? Um, yeah, you've now climbed a significant number of cliffs. You can see that there's about a five foot jump next in these rocks if you wanted to continue in this direction. And then there's more cliffs up to what looks like a large apartment building. All right, yeah, screw it. I'm gonna keep trudging along. I'm gonna make that ga that jump, that, that gap. Okay. Let's roll. The uh, strength or dex plus athletics check. I only got one success. Is that going to be enough? You leap towards it. And you leap a pretty good leap. But on the other side, your feet slip. Um, and a couple things happen. One is that you take a point of bashing damage as you cut open your leg. You skin your leg, essentially. For a beat, which is essentially like part of an experience, would you like to turn that failure into a dramatic failure? I do. Okay, so mark off a beat and you take a condition. That condition is limp. As you have gained a limp, you kind of like hit the other side, you slide skinning your leg and you fall part of the way into the hole. You managed to catch yourself, but you badly injured your leg. 
Charlotte, I'm going to say that you don't see this because you're examining the statue, but Victoria, would you give me a wits plus composure check to see Parallax fall? Yes. Charlotte, how many successes on that prime gnosis? Three. With three successes, as you scrutinize this thing, you can tell that this is something to do with awakened magic. You can tell that it is prime and matter magics that are infusing this statue. And you think that it is associated with the practice of making. Now making or creation is actually a very powerful discipline. Whoever created this magical object was a very powerful mage. Oh God. You can also tell that it's emitting heat. It's like warm and you can see the waves trickle through the gears of temperature. Victoria, successes on that roll? One, you hear a noise as Parallax slips and you turn and you don't see him anymore. Oh no, Parallax. And I point behind us where he should be. What, I thought he was on the rocks. You see him now as he pulls himself out of, I assume, Parallax, what do you do? You're pulling yourself out? Yeah, definitely trying to climb myself back out, I guess. You just do it, you pull yourself back up. Excellent. You don't necessarily see um, Mona or Ermengarde, and you're not necessarily looking for them. No. Yeah, I'm doing my own thing right now. If you want to give me a wits composure check, it would take two successes to see that he's injured. Uh, one success. Uh, yeah, you just see him. He's slipped. I'll say, he's split up. We'll meet him on the road. Let's go. There's a really powerful mage who lives here. I don't know anything about them. We don't, we don't want to encounter someone we don't know anything about. Let's go. All right. Running through the woods, further and further from Parallax, you can see a massive mansion up on a hill. And Ermengarde, there's a hedge maze very similar to a hedge maze that you've been running from through. The building is a different building than the one that you were in before. So you know that this is not the exact hedge mage, probably, but it looks so strikingly similar with 20 foot tall, thick walls of green. There are strange purple flowers that grow through it. And at this distance, you can see some sort of white obelisk protruding from the center of the maze. The one I was in had a, did it have an obelisk too, or did it just have a fountain? A fountain in the very center. Okay. I grab onto the back of Mona's shirt to like stop uh, Mona instantly. We can't go near that. No, we're not. We're getting on the road. We're leaving this place. But the road can't go past the, the house and the, the hedge. It's. I'll explain it later. We cannot go near that. Nothing good is going to come out of that. Let's get to the road first. Then we'll make a new plan of action. Do we have to pass the hedge maze to get to the and the house to get to the road? Um, you will have to pass the house pretty closely, but the hedge maze you can kind of like skirt the edge of and not go near. You do okay. see, both of you, without a roll, that there is a man dressed in a t-shirt with black hair. He's kind of buff, and he's just kind of like sitting, or standing, I suppose, on a balcony. There's several like balconies that lead up to the house. You imagine that they both have exquisite views of the large yard here. He is looking over the area. Additionally, you can also see that there's something down in the yard. It looks kind of like a construction site where they're unearthing something. There's a big pile of dirt. There looks like there's a tunnel entrance in the middle of this pristine yard. Hmm. All right, I will attempt to stealth. Stealth plus dex. Stealth plus wits. Can I use a willpower to add three? Uh, Yes, you can. Absolutely. Two. 
There's a moment as you get nearer and nearer to the house where there's this tree that is near you and you step on one of its roots and the tree snaps and the whole thing falls. It was uncanny how much noise it made. You sense that there is some sort of magical presence nearby. And you see that while the figure who is down on the ground has not noticed you, there's another figure, a woman, standing in one of the windows of the mansion, her hair platinum blonde, her face creased, and you can see her casting an awakened spell. Parallax, you have now reached the cliff that goes up to the apartment complex. There's a small worn path where some people have come down onto the rocks before, and you can take it up to the brick building. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna walk up that path, and one thing I'm gonna do that I haven't done yet for some reason is I'm gonna turn on my fate site. First, just do it, but then yeah. you can also roll if there's something that you want to examine with your fate site. Sure. Yeah, so I'm just gonna trudge up this, uh, little worn out path, I guess. And hopefully okay. it's that brick building. As you go up the path, you see that there's the large brick building. It looks like an apartment complex, fairly nice. But there's also these two smaller stone houses here. They look like maybe one or two room houses. And both the apartment complex and the houses are fairly close to this parking lot filled with cars. There's space for maybe 50 cars, and there's around 20 or so cars parked here now. A few people mill about this area, some of them dressed in casual clothes, others dressed in what look like uniforms. With your fate sight on, you can tell that there's something about these people. It's like they have a destiny, almost, but it's being squashed. It's like their potential is being removed. You get an uneasy feeling with your fate sight up about this whole area. And then looking back, you can see from your height and perspective that there's a mansion in the direction that both Mona and Ermengarde were walking. And there's a flare from inside that building. Something fateful is happening there. Wonderful. Um, yeah, so I see that flare and I'm like, no. Oh. Shit. And I guess I'm going to start limping in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Is there any one, but like any person between me and that mansion? Or is it just like an um, empty stretch? The mansion is a decent ways from you right now. Oh, okay. Because uh, essentially you climbed some cliffs, you got yourself separated. You'll have to walk down some cliffs in the woods, some height down into the woods and then through trees. It looks like this whole area is actually being grown in such a way that it would be difficult to do as if someone was separating that mansion from these apartment complexes with nature. You think that you could use a space spell to portal over there pretty easily though. Yeah, I was thinking about doing that. Should have done this a long time ago, I guess. But yeah, I will portal on over there because I ain't lipping that far away. And uh, luckily, portal is also a roach of mine. So you can portal to some place that you can see, which you can see the mansion with a minus two penalty. You can also portal directly to Mona with a minus four penalty. It would be less if you had something like her hair or her true name. Yeah, I guess I don't know her true name yet. Uh, it's unfortunate. You never will. It reminded me the next time I see you to cost, uh, cast a thread on you. So that way you have a connection in that sense. But I will portal on over to Mona with the minus four, but I'll use my pocket watch and my high speech merit as well. Yeah, that'll add plus four. So it cancels out your penalties entirely. Yeah, I'm going to do it like I'm behind the side of the building. So it's sort of out of the way from people from seeing. One, two, three successes. Nice. So you do it. You appear behind Mona. And for a second, you even see Ermengarde flicker into your vision and then disappear. And you're standing in the woods behind them now. Do I notice? Wit's composure. 
Uh, two successes. Yes. Ah! You mean you could teleport this whole time? Ah! Oh, and paradox. Are you absorbing paradox or releasing paradox? Can you can you teleport us into Boston? Back to Boston? That would be difficult. What do you uh, need? What do you need to make it happen? I would need a connection with a certain place to Here, I pull out the wooden crucifix. This belongs to Jane Paris. On the first balcony level, there's like a path that goes around the house and a large white horse casually trots riderless from around the corner. Then you hear the sound of a horn. Ermengarde, it's a hunting horn. We might want to move quickly. Yeah, here I hand Parallax the wooden cross. What the hell was that sound? You see, you seem to know what it is, Erwingard. It's a, it's a horn. There's a hunting party coming through. This is not the same as moving. Um, <laughs> and I start walking. I recognize I'm invisible, right? Like. <laughs> yeah, it's a little disconcerting. The f- plants along the ground move, even though you don't see your limbs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess, I mean, so I have the the little wooden cross. Is that enough? Do I know that's enough to actually make an attempt at getting uh, over? Yeah, it's enough to make an attempt. Uh, <laughs> using minus six penalty. Minus six. All right. That is going to be difficult. I will give it a shot, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'll use a, a willpower. You reach out, you grab the other two. You see a woman stride through the double doors as you're doing this. She points directly in your direction to the man with the beard who starts moving rapidly towards you faster than humanly possible, you would say. There's something on him. And as he does this, um, those of you with mage sights up, can see that his shadow becomes the shadow of a wolf. Then you flicker from existence. Oh my you God. You appear. You're standing on a road in a forest. You don't see Boston. Does what it look you like? See is that there's a cross here. The cross is a memorial it looks like for a car accident on this small rural road. You turn to gain your bearings, but you don't recognize any of this. Did you just do? Oh, uh, um, he transported us through a portal. Where we are, uh, I don't know, but these woods don't well, look like the same woods. Well, I mean, uh, we're not we're not being hunted anymore, so that's a plus, right, guys? <laughs> I'm going to clap you on the back. Good job, Parallax. Uh, Outstanding. Am I still invisible? Yes. Okay. Uh, Let me find out where we are. A space spell could tell you where you are. And Parallax, what site do you have up right now? Uh, Just a fake. Okay. You feel a presence through your fate site. Do I feel like it's a person? It does feel like a person, perhaps, or a demon, something. A consciousness is here with you. And the woods begin to fill with a mist. Is my prime set up? Your prime sight is up. Do I see this presence on him? You don't see immediately any presences, but if he mentions it, you could roll to scrutinize this area. There's no active spell being cast, but yet the mist is rolling in. How strange. This is not natural. I'm going to ask to Byron, where are we? What's going on? (laughs) Byron emerges from the skull and says, I'm not sure, but there's 
magic afoot. There's something coming. Can I investigate or scrutinize the mist? Yes. I scrutinize the mist. Um, roll at a minus three penalty, your prime plus gnosis. Two successes. With two successes, you can tell this is someone's nimbus. A spell is manifesting around you. Oh. You guys, this is someone's nimbus. A spell's manifesting around us. Can I use one of my rotes and dispel the spell? I think that you don't see the source of the spell or the target of the spell. I'm going to say that you cannot dispel it. Okay. Is there any area where it's not misty or is it surrounding us? It's like the mist is rolling from all directions around you. There's like a circle of no mist around you. Okay. Can I cast a uh, force field? Um, yes, you can cast a force field. You throw up a defensive barrier around you. I'm not even going to have you roll right now. We'll determine potency if it becomes relevant. You now add your forces dots to your armor, essentially. It prevents damage. With a shudder of the world, you can see that something has changed. Then, kneeling at that cross, you see a woman. It's the same woman from before. She has striking blonde hair. She is praying at that cross, suddenly there. There's a spell active on her, some sort of armoring spell, just like you have an armoring spell about you, but her armoring spell is time. And it looks for all intents and purposes as though she did not teleport here. She just is here. All right, I, I'm gonna just limp on over to her. Is she still praying? Like that's... Um, yeah, like she kneeling. looks up at you as you walk towards her. You can tell that she's like middle age. She's got a striking look about her though. Very severe uh, pointed features and a few lines of worry are on her face. She's dressed in riding boots, though there's no horse here. And she looks over at you as you approach appraisingly. I'm going to give like a sort of nimble bow and be like my name I go by Parallax um, and I gesture to Mona and uh, Ermengarde behind me Ermengarde's say, invisible oh sorry I say this is Mona she probably can see Ermengarde and I'll be like we seek counsel with your um, your your provost what no, we don't she lightly under my breath Bows anymore. I don't know if they hear it, but I can't control myself. <laughs> uh, she nods her head and says, I am Blanche Fleur, and I respect the right of hospitality and the right of crossing here, as I hope that you respect my right of sanctuary. Do you have any dots in politics, politics, or occult? I do have two dots in occult. All right, um, anyone who wants can roll an intelligence occult check. I also want to ask Byron if he knows her. Are you going to like whisper this? Yeah. Do, we know, do you know her? I don't know her, but she seems familiar. I've been from the land of the living, but we sense that I once did know her. As a child, perhaps. Um, I got three successes on that occult check, by the way. Uh, with three successes, you know of the Lex Magica. The Lex Magica is essentially the rules by which mages organize their societies. And the rules have, you don't remember all of them off the top of your head, but there are some rules that all mages are in theory supposed to respect. 
by invoking these rights, you know that she must be a member of the Diamond Orders. So she is the Mysterium or the Silver Ladder, the Guardians or the Adamantium Arrow. She's probably not orderless, but it's possible that she just uses those rules that the conciliums have written up. What she is talking about are gold laws, laws that apply to all mages in all situations, according to the pentacle. Um, there are also silver and bronze laws dictated by a city, but you don't, you're not like up on the Lex Magica. You don't know sure. very many of the specific rules. You think that by invoking the right of sanctuary, she is saying that she has the right to defend herself if you threaten her home or act to cause it harm. But she also said essentially that she would treat you with respect and hospitality for being in her territory. Excellent. I love it. What'd you say her name was again? It was Blanche Fleur, which Blanche. means white flower. I say, well, of, of course, uh, we re respect that wholeheartedly. Um, see, my, my friends and I have been not exactly sure how we ended up here. Um, it's been a very trying past several days. It's trying to seek our way back into Boston, if possible. And as you can see, I sort of gesture to myself, like, I mean, I'm very tattered. I got the, the bum leg now and my, my suit jack is totally ripped up. I'm like, you can see, we've, uh, <laughs> yeah. You could progress down this road and she gestures in one of the directions. Eventually you will reach the gate to our family property. And from there, you'll find that cell phones will again work. You should be able to reach a cab if that is how you intend to travel. And her eyes kind of sparkle a little bit as she says that. But I could always call a car for you if you'd be willing to do me a favor in return. Uh, yeah. what right, a we'll <laughs> we, we can call our own cab. What favor did you have in mind? Perhaps tea for an hour. There are matters that I would discuss with you, and it's been so long since I've been able to host such an interesting group. And as she says that, she looks directly at Ermengard, who is invisible. <laughs> I'm going to call our own cab. Parallax. I'm allergic uh, to tea. He's allergic <laughs> to tea. <laughs> yep. yep. It's, uh, it could kill me. There are figures in the woods now. Through the mist, you can sense that there are other people closing around you. But they're already so close. How did they get this close without you noticing them? Are they actually there? Uh, with your prime sight up? Yes, they are. And several of them, that one and that one over there, have some sort of awakened magic on them. Does that mean they're sleepers, but they're currently awakened? There are a couple of options. They could be sleepers who are unaware that they have a spell cast on them. Mm -hmm. They could be mages who cast that spell, or they could be this thing in between sleepers and mages called sleepwalkers. Mm -hmm. Sleepwalkers can't cast their own spells, but they can use magic items, essentially. I mean, she gave us the option to go our own way. So I'm going to take that option. And just start walking? Did you yep. really, though? Why don't you do a wit's empathy check to read what she's feeling, I think. Um, I got a two. With two successes, you can tell that she is willing to let you physically leave this place. Mm -hmm. She has made explicitly no promises of leaving you be after that, however. <laughs> you sense that she is interested obsessed perhaps with you and mages are hesitant 
you could say to not follow their obsessions. Okay. Mona, we should go. I don't know if she's going to let us go, though. You are, of course, free to go, she says, responding to your conversation that you've been having in whispers. (laughs) Yeah, but you just told me she would let me physically go, but not... You think that she will let you go, but she might follow you or try to catch you in some way later on. It's like she wants you. Yeah. She wants you and she's willing to let you go in so far as she's not trying to impede you right now. Okay. We're going to go and I'm going to start walking. She steps forward to you, Parallax, and extends her hand in a dainty gesture. Well, I guess I can't say I speak for them, but I would love some tea. And I sort of cross her arm and I'm like, yeah, let's, uh, let's shall we? And Have fun storming the castle. Prodwolf, will you ensure that they reach the end of our land without incident? One of the figures steps forward. It's that man from before with black hair emerging from the fog. He nods and starts walking down the road. If you would follow my son. Hmm. Yes, thank you for your hospitality. Uh, I'm sure we will see each other again. You can see Parallax with your fate sight up that fate has broken here and the two of you begin to walk on different paths. You can see Ermengarde and Mona's footsteps as they echo light patterns through this world. And you walk off to go have some tea. And that's where we're gonna pause this session. Yay! (laughs) So all mages have these things called obsessions. Has anyone taken steps during this session to fulfill your obsession? Because that would be worth experience. There's also aspirations. If you fulfill any of your aspirations, you also gain a beat. Um, And aspirations are changeable. So if you'd like to change any of your aspirations, you can let me know now. Have we returned to our timeline? Yes, you have returned to your timeline. All right, I gained another feat. One of my aspirations is actually uh, one of the long ones, at least, is uh, Master Time Magic. And seeing sort of one of my motivations here is knowing that this uh, floor person is a very powerful time mage. I'm hoping that I can maybe learn a thing or two from her. So would that count? I I would say that you haven't achieved that point yet. Actually, no, do it. It's an arcane beat. Sounds great. Yeah, why don't you change that? to be pursue mastery of time magic. Okay. Um, You also gain arcane beats or beats in general when you have dramatic failures or um, the other thing that can happen is if you release paradox or have terrible wisdom causing sins, but none of you have done anything against your integrity. No murders today. Man, mages are so much nicer than vampires. Yeah, we think a lot more. And yeah, I hope that you've all enjoyed your time here. Yes, Charlotte. Can I add a new aspiration, which is defeat evil parallax? Yes. Oh, kitty. Kitty. He says hello. Excellent. What's this cat's name, Trevor? Uh, Azazel. Nice. He's about six months old, I think. Oh, Oh, God. Ow, 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 ow. No claws, please. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) To anyone who is watching or listening to this, please make sure to give us a like, subscribe, or comment to see what you like and what you'd like to see more of. I just realized you took my cross for me. 